All aboard, everyone. The Beast Hunter's bus is about to depart. Ivy tried not to sound irritated over the loudspeaker. For some reason, today's tour group wasn't taking any notice of the schedule. They were still browsing the market stalls, looking at mothfolk woven shawls and succumbing to a rather pretty elf who was touting her supposedly handmade earrings. Ivy happened to know they were made in a goblin sweatshop that used substandard materials, but it wasn't her place to say. Glancing at her watch, she raised the speaker to her lips again. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please complete your purchases and board the bus? Are they deaf? The driver, Tony, grumbled as he lounged against the fender. Ivy smoothed her free hand down her skirt. I guess the fairy folk bazaar is always enticing. Just a load of cheap trinkets. Tony snorted. Ivy was inclined to agree with him, but given that Tony was a glass-half-empty kind of guy, it was best not to get him started. You had to stay chipper and upbeat in this business. She realized she was tapping her foot and stopped abruptly. Impatience wasn't acceptable either. Just then, another coach drew up alongside. Ivy's heart sank. Trixie's Tours, which meant that one of Trixie's brightly painted buses was about to outshine Beast Hunters yet again. When Motham City opened up to humans a decade ago, Beast Hunters had been the first company to run tours here. Folks from nearby gated towns like Tween and Twill had been more than happy to pay top dollar to Monster Watch. From a safe distance, of course. But a few months ago, their biggest rival, Trixie's, had done a sneaky one-up. Trixie's now took humans to visit the sleazy spots in Motham, the streets full of drug dens, the places where beasts got into fights and succubi sold sex on the streets. And now, Trixie's were out booking beast hunters three to one. Ivy couldn't help feeling worried by the trend. After three years as a tour guide with beast hunters, maybe her presentation was losing its shine? So much of this industry relied on word of mouth, and it seemed word of mouth was putting Trixie's ahead of them. If this continued, she might even lose her job, which would mean returning to Tween to live with her parents and a life of mind-numbing boredom. Ivy tried not to let her thoughts spiral as she watched a group of giggling humans spill out of the bright pink bus next to them, and taking up the rear, of course, was Orla St. John. Orlo was Trixie's bubbliest guide. Pretty and curvaceous, she wore her hair in a sharp bob with purple streaks in her bangs, and she had piercings just about everywhere. Well, everywhere you could see, and who knew where else. Ivy glanced down at her pale blue blouse, buttoned up to the neck, and her neat A-line skirt. The insignia of a winking goblin just above the company's initials on her blouse seemed very tame compared to Orla's outfit, in comparison, Trixie's guides wore tiny crop tops emblazoned with a sequin dragon paired with tight black leather pants. The whole ensemble screamed, fun, edgy, sexy.